Good evening, how are you? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. I am fine, thank you. Good evening, teacher. Good, Good evening. Good evening. Okay, welcome again. This is the last week of this session. Um, and we are going to try to end this week with the last topics. So for this uh, session, for this day, we are going to talk about future. We were talking about the past and simple present in the last week. But in this uh, week, we are going to talk about the future and the structures that we are going to use. So we are going to begin with uh, this session. So let me share the screen. So give me some time because we are going to develop the topic going to, to um, talk about events in the future. So let's see. Okay, we are going to talk about future tense. We are going to uh, know what are those um, structures to talk about the future. So we have like four or five uh, future tenses, but uh, today we are going to develop the structure going to, to talk about the future and some events or things that we are going to perform in the future. So we are going to start with the structure. So we have the going to. I think uh, you have seen something about the going to, or even you use this structure to talk about uh, events in the future or something that we want to do in the future. So it is not um, really complicated. It's um, a really easy topic. So we are going to um, develop the topic and the structures and how to make sentence and the uses of going to, and we have some exercises. We have one um, a speaking exercise and we have a, another um, exercise that is about writing some sentence. So we have two different uh, exercises for today. So. Imagine that you want to buy a car. That is the first thing. Imagine that you want to buy a car. How can we say that we want to buy a car, but in future tense? How can we say that phrase that we want to uh, buy a car using the going to? We have the example for that situation. And I am going to write the sentence. I'm going to buy a new car. So I am um, I want to say that I, I need something in the future or I am thinking something for the future or I have plans for the future. So I'm um I'm going to use this structure. Si yo quiero decir eh, algo del futuro, un plan que tengo, algo que quiero realizar, algo que ya lo pensé y estoy segura que lo voy a hacer, voy a utilizar el going to. In this example that I want a car, it's, um, I am thinking about the price, I have the money, um, 
I will uh, talk with someone that can help me to buy this car. So I am thinking about that action. And um, in the speaking, I am going to say, I'm going to buy a new car. Voy a comprar un nuevo car. So this is something really important to know. Going to is not a tense. This is very important. It's not a tense. It is a special a structure that we use to talk about the future. Okay, this is not a tense. It is not a tense like um, the present, the past, and all of that. No, it is a special structure, special structure that we use to talk about the future. In this case, we use the tense. The tense is a present, past, future. Those are the tenses. But in this case, going to is just a special structure that we are using to talk about the future. Not a tense, just an structure. Okay, it says that when we use going in a phrase to talk about the future, the form is composed of three elements. We have three elements when we are using the going to talk about the future. And what are those elements that are um, in this uh, structure? First, the verb to be, Conjugated plus point plus the infinitive of the main verb. So in this case, in the verb to be conjugated, this one has to match the subject. And this is something that we already know because we are uh, talking about the subject or the pronouns. In this case, we are going to use the verb to be um, with the pronouns, right? We already know that because it is one of the main uh, things that we learn in English. So we have the uh, structure. The uh, structure of going to is and we have here the subject plus b plus going plus to infinity in this case we know that when we are using the infinity uh, is when we use the main form of the verb in this case, to plus the main form of the verb. So we have some examples like this. We have the subject. In, in this case, I am going to use I. Then I have the verb to be, um, that is um, conjugated to match the subject. I am going, that is the structure, the infinitive to buy, a new car and that's the complement of the sentence so this is the structure i am going to buy a new car the subject plus b plus going plus two infinitive it is not really uh, complicated that is the structure 
So we have another example. I am going to go and swimming. Then we have the negative form. That is almost the same, but we are going to use or add the not. Then we have subject plus B, plus in this case, we are going to add not plus going plus two. So we have some examples. He is not going to take the exam. Then we have, it is not, it is not going to rain. So the, that's the structure, simple as that. Esa es la estructura, ¿verdad? No es tan eh, complicada en este caso, uh, porque estamos utilizando los sujetos con el verbo be, obviamente el verbo be tiene que Eh, concordar con lo que es el sujeto. In this case, we are using the pronouns, but also we can use names. And that's um, the same with the verb to be. We are going to uh, see if there is a woman or a man or is an animal or an object, uh, or it is plural or, or it is singular. So we are going to use that for um, knowing what is the verb to be that we are going to use. So in this case, we have the positive and we have the negative, but also we uh, have the um, question, but let's uh, stay here. And then we are going to develop the, the, the part of the question. Vamos a ver sobre esas dos, la positiva y la negativa. Después vamos a hablar de cómo hacemos preguntas con WH questions or WH words and the going to. So now we have the structures for positive and negative uh, sentence, but we are going to talk about the functions of the going to. We already know that is um, used to talk about the future, but it also has some functions. And now we are going to know what are those functions that they're going to or this special structure has. In this case, we have the function and it says the use of going to to refer to future events suggests Okay, it says the use of going to refer to events suggests a very strong association with the present. It is talking about something that is going to happen in the future, but is uh, associated with something that is happening in the present. So the time is not important. Okay, in this case, it said that the time is not important. In this case, we are not talking about a specific time in the future. It's 
we know that it's later uh, than now, but that, that is not really important. But the attitude is that the event depends on something in the present situation that we know about. En este caso, estamos diciendo que para usar el going to no es eh, necesario que nosotros le pongamos un tiempo específico, que digamos mañana, en dos meses, en tres meses. No, it's something that eh, it's going to happen in the future, but the time is not really important. We know that it's later than now, but the attitude, it's that eh, it depends, that action in the future depends on something in the present that we know about. Es algo que nosotros sabemos en el presente y que sabemos que va a pasar. Tiene que ser algo que nosotros ya sepamos que eh, va a pasar en el futuro. No el tiempo exacto en el que va a suceder, sino que ya sabemos que es una acción que sí se va a desarrollar en el futuro. Going is mainly used to refer to our plans. Going it's mainly used to refer to our plans and intentions. Okay, it refers to our plans and intentions. So if we have some plans, we uh, are going to use this structure for our plans or for our intentions, or to make predictions based on present evidence. If we have evidence, we can use the structure going to, because we have evidence of something is going to happen. Esto se refiere a los planes que nosotros tenemos o las intenciones que tenemos de hacer algo, o oh, si tenemos evidencia de que algo eh, puede llegar a pasar, vamos a utilizar la estructura going to. In everyday speech, going to is often shortened to gonna. Going to is also used as gonna, especially in American English, but it is never written that way because it is informal, but we are going to... Um, learn something about the use of gonna in the in speaking uh, English in the United States um, in some places. So now, how do we use going to? How do we use going to? We have some things uh, to uh, specify how we can use this structure. The first one is going to for intention. For intention. We use going to when we have the intention to do something before we speak. We have already decided before speaking and we have some examples. So in this case, we are going to say that we use this structure when we have to do something before we speak. And we have some examples to notice. And it says, Joe has won the lottery. He says he is going to buy a car. So, the first use, it says going to for intentions. We use this structure when we have the intention to do something before we speak. 
we have already decided before speaking. En este caso, ¿verdad? Utilizamos esta, esta estructura antes de hablar. Ya tenemos pensado qué es lo que vamos a hacer. In the example, we have a situation that is that someone eh, has won the lottery. Alguien ganó dinero, alguien ganó la lotería. So, with that action that someone eh, won some money, esa persona ya sabe que ganó el dinero. So, in that case, he said he's going to buy a car. ¿Por qué? Porque ya sabe que tiene el dinero para comprarse un auto. And that's the intention. He has the money. He can buy a car. Another one. We are not going to paint our bedroom tomorrow. I have the plan. But maybe something happened and I have to change my plans. So in this case, my intention was to paint the bedroom, but something happened and now I am not going to do it because I have no time, because I need to buy something because of my work, but I have the intention. But in this case, I don't have the intention to do it. So I am not going to do depending on my room. And we have a, a question here. Where are you going to go on holiday? So in this case, something that we uh, already know because it is something that happened every year, the holiday. So in this question, we, uh, where are you going to go um, on a holiday it is something that happens uh, every year. So we can uh, ask that information of plans that people have uh, for these uh, specific um, dates or the intention that the people have to do in those uh, dates. So we have the, um, it says in these examples, we have an intention or plan before speaking. The decision was made before speaking. I have my decision, I have my plans, I have my intentions. Then we have the number two. Going to or predictions. So we have prediction, no plans, uh, not a, uh, um, in this case, we are not going to talk about the intention or the plans, we are going to talk about the predictions. So it says that we often, use going to, to make a prediction about the future. Our prediction is based on present evidence. We're saying what we think will happen. And we have some examples. In this case, we are talking about the prediction, something that we think will happen in the future, but based on evidence. En este caso, estamos hablando de las predicciones y utilizamos el going to para hablar de esas predicciones sobre el futuro pero está basado en algo del presente, evidencia del presente. So, we have the examples. The sky is very black. It's going to rain. So, 
So in this case, this uh, sentence here, the sky is very black, is the evidence of something. And this one, it's going to rain, is the, um, the sentence that I am thinking that is going to happen or the action that I think is going to happen. So I have evidence that the sky is black. One thing is in my, in my mind that maybe it's going to rain or in other country, it's going to uh, snow. But in our cases, it's about a storm, uh, rain. So we have evidence and we uh, talk about something that it's going to happen, but we are going to have something to talk about. So in the second one, it's 8.30. It's 8.30. You are going to miss your train. Okay, this is the evidence, the hour. And this is the action that is going to happen. It's 8.30. You are going to miss your train. In this case, it's because of the uh, hour in uh, which the train departs. Hello? Okay, so the evidence is the hour, the time. And the uh, action is that that person is going to miss the train because it is late. So we have evidence and then we make our prediction. You know, talking about um, something magical. It is uh, talking about something that is going to happen uh, because of the evidence. Then we have the other example that it says, I crash. I crashed the company car. Then it says, my boss isn't, is not going to be very happy. Okay, I have the action here. I crashed the company car. I have, or oh, I had an accident using the company car. Then I think my boss is not going to be happy. In this case, my boss is going to be angry with me because I crashed the company car. So. I have the evidence that I had an accident and I um, did something with the car and it is damaged. And then my boss is going to be very angry because I am not, um, I'm not taking care of the things of the, of the company. So in this uh, number two, in this part number two, we have the evidence and it's talking about the prediction of the future using the evidence that we have in the present that we are going to use it to make predictions for the future. Know that we can also use going to um, with other tenses. So we have the two um, uses of the going to. The first one is talking about the plans or talking about the intentions. And then we have the number two that is talking about predictions. But in this case, we are talking about future. We are using the going to, to talk about the future, but also we can use the going to, to talk about in this case, the past, not just the uh, future time. So the going to, in the past tense. 
So it is a special structure in this case to talk about the future, but we can also use this structure to talk about the past. And when we going to is used in the past tense, it refers to something that was going to happen, but in the end, it did not happen. Like in the future, it's um, the going to, it is used to talk about intentions or it talk about predictions. And in this case, uh, when we use the going to in the past, it's talking about the something that um, was going to happen, but at the end, it did not happen. Estamos diciendo que eh, usamos la estructura going to para referirnos a predicciones, planes o cosas que nosotros queremos hacer en el futuro. Pero cuando lo usamos en el pasado, se refiere a que algo iba a suceder, pero al final no sucedió. Siempre hablando de planes y de predicciones. So, we have here the specification. Okay, here we have the specification of the use of be going to in the past tense. So when we use the be going to in the past tense here, it refers to something that was going to happen, but in the end, it did not happen. Something that uh, was going to. So we have the examples of this. So we have the number one, I was, going to call you. But I lost. But I lost your phone number. Okay. I have here the action that I wanted to do. I was I was going to call you. I was pretty sure that I um, that I was a, or will do that action. But at the end, I lost your phone number. Tenemos dos partes de esa oración. La primera, I was going to call you. Iba a llamarte. I have the intention to do it. Tenía la intención de hacerlo or I have the plan to do it. Tenía el plan de hacerlo. But at the end, I lost the phone number. Pero pasó que perdí el, el número. So it was just an intention because I wanted to call you, but at the same time, I lost your uh, phone number and I cannot call you anymore because I, I didn't have your number. So the second one, it was going to rain. It was going to rain, but suddenly, the sun here, it was going to rain, this one. It was going to rain, but suddenly the sun appeared. In that case, we have the evidence that the sky is black, like in the in the sentence that we have in the second use of the going to. It was going to rain because the, the sky was black and it seems that it's going to rain. But suddenly, pero de repente, el sol apareció y ya no llovió. Something that, it's, uh, that was going to happen, but at the end, it didn't happen because of something natural. Then we have the number three. I mean, Sorry. Okay, number three. 
we were going to buy a new TV. But then we change our minds. Okay, we have here the intention. We were going to buy a new TV. I have the intention to buy a new TV because maybe I need it or maybe I and changing my place or just because we want to have a new TV. And then we change our minds and we didn't buy the new TV. Íbamos a comprar una nueva televisión, pero al final cambiamos nuestra mente, ¿verdad? Ya no quisimos hacerlo de esa forma. Number four and the last one. You were going to be my bridesmaid. This is, um, this phrase is a little bit hard. Okay, you were going to be by my bridesmaid, but then just live with my boyfriend. Something really hard. It is uh, something that we are going to use because it's something uh, that happens in real life. So in this case, the intention that the, uh, this girl, it's, uh, we're going to be the bridesmaid, but the, she did something bad. And now uh, the, the bride-to-be, it's uh, changed her mind. Tell me, Roberto. Teacher, I have a question. Tell me. What does that mean? Bridesmaid. The bridesmaid is la madrina, la, 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 la chica que va con la novia. Ah, okay. It's a new word for me, teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, in this case, it, it's talking about that we have an, an intention, but then we change our minds. So, now, we have here the uh, space to talk about the WH questions with the future form. So I was saying that we have these structures. We have the present, I mean, we have the affirmative sentence and then we have the negative form. Now we are going to use the WH words to talk about the questions with the uh, structure going to to talk about the future or to ask things for the future. So we have here WH questions in future form. Okay, we have WH questions always begin with one of the WH Question words. This is something that we already know that when we are using the WH words or make making WH questions, we use the WH question words that are how, how, uh, I mean, how, why, when, what and all of that uh, question words. Which show what kind of information is wanted. So we are going to make uh, uh, like a uh, we are going to remember the WH words. We have when, we have what, 
We have where, we have why, we have how. We are going to let that in that space. So the WH questions in the future tense are used to ask information in the future. That is something uh, that we already know that we are talking about the future or actions in the future. So in this case, the WH questions or these uh, kind of questions, it's going to ask something of the future. So we have the form, the form of these questions. In the future tense, both in simple and continuous, in this case, we are using the continuous because we are using the ing form of the verb. We use the, foot, the future form of the auxiliary and modal verbs. There are two means we can use to ask about the future, will and to be going to. In el future tense, en, en el futuro, Tenemos dos formas, dos auxiliares, lo vamos a poner como auxiliares en este caso, para hacer preguntas. Si talk about the future, tenemos el will, and we have the be going to, that is the um, one we are uh, learning right now. Tenemos el will y tenemos el going to. En este caso estamos hablando solo del going to. Tomorrow we are going to talk about the will. Uh, the structure of will and the uses of will and how can we um, make sentence using will to talk about the future question and all of that. But now we are going use uh, using just the going to. Entonces mañana vamos a hablar del, be, del will y eh, hoy vamos a terminar con el going to. So we have the structure of the WH question in future form with the be going to. We have the first structure that is WH question plus to be. This to be, this verb to be, it's going to be in present. Then we have the subject. And at the end, we have, ah, then we have going to plus verb that is in an infinitive plus the question mark. Then we have the second structure that is what and who. What, who plus to be that is also in present plus the subject plus going to, plus the verb in infinitive, plus the question mark. Then we have the third one that is which, or whose, plus noun. In this case, we have a noun, plus to be, Uh, also in a present plus the subject plus going to plus verb in infinity plus the question mark. So we have three structures to a uh, make question using the WH words and the going to, and we have some examples. We have, where are you going? Where are you going to hang the picture? So we have here the WH question. Then we have here the verb be in present. Then we have the subject, the going to, in this case, is just the going, going to, like this, we have the verb in infinitive, 
And we have the uh, complement like here and the question mark. So we have there the structure. Then we have another one. What are you going to wear tonight? What are you going to wear tonight? Then whom is she going to marry? Which course are they going to attend? And the last one, whose dog are we going to adopt? So there we have the examples for the structures of the WH words or WH questions. Then we have another one that is almost the end of the, um, the topic. And then we have the, uh, the exercise. And we are going to talk about the informal way to use uh, the coin too, that is not used in the uh, written form, it is, used um, just in the speaking way because it is really informal to say it. So in this case, we have the informal way to use this and it is gonna like this. And if you can see it's um, date as a mistake because it is not used in the written form. So this uh, give me the options to change it for the correct form. But in this case, we are going to use it like this. So it says that sometimes when we speak quickly, going to sounds like gonna, while it is grammatically incorrect. It is used a lot in very informal English. You will also occasionally see the word gonna written in some titles or in some lyrics. And it says, as an example, I'm going to go to the beach tomorrow. I'm going to go to the beach tomorrow. He's gonna bring his girlfriend to the party. It's going to bring his girlfriend to the party. So the gonna is used um, or maybe it is here like that because when we are talking really fast, not in my case, because I am not talking really, really fast. Uh, some people can hear the gonna in uh, the place of going to. So it is not our way to um, write it because it is really informal and it is used when we speak with another a person. So that is so <clears throat> just the uh, specification of the use of gonna. So, uh, so tell me. I have a question, teacher. Tell me. Um, but we can use gonna only to talk with someone. Yes. Uh, we can use it. We can't use it gonna to write a letter. No, we can use it to write because it is informal. In this case, when you are writing a document or you are writing a letter, you can use it. But if it is for someone that is maybe your best friend, you can use it because it is a way to uh, talk with that person. But when you are talking maybe with your boss or when someone that you don't um, know from a lot of time, you can use it because it is not really, really formal. It's, in some cases, it's like when we are talking with our friends in Spanish. In este caso, cuando hablamos con nuestros amigos, podemos utilizar este tipo de estructuras. Como el, usar el, el, el hey dude, o ese tipo de, de, de frases que, que se utiliza, ¿verdad? Para hablar con los amigos, es lo mismo con el gona. Lo podemos utilizar cuando hablamos, pero si le quieren mandar, digamos, un correo, una carta o 
algo a alguien, por ejemplo, eh, Amilcar le quiere mandar una carta hablando del, del curso a Diana o a Liliana o a Elizabeth, mmm, no sería tan eh, bueno hacerlo porque es bastante informal y es como, ah, somos amigos que nos conocemos desde hace muchos años y podemos hablar de esa forma. Y podría sentirse como algo incómodo a la hora de leerlo. But in this case, that is someone that you know, es una persona que conoce desde hace muchos años que son muy amigos, you can use it in the writing form. But in this case, it is better to use it just in the speaking way. Great teacher. You're very kind. Okay, now we are going to do the uh, exercises. So we have some exercise, but in this case, we are going to do it. The first one that is a speaking exercise. We have just a couple of minutes. I have some questions that we are going to ask. So in this case, we have the exercise number one. That is speaking. We are going to uh, answer these questions with uh, something that is uh, asking in these cases. So we have the question number one. It says, where are you going? Where are you going to spend your next vacation? And then number two, what is the next thing you are going to say? Number three, what is the next book you are going to read? What is the next book you are going to read? Number four, what is the next course you are going to take? Number five, when are you um, going to meet your friends again? Number six, what gift are you going to buy uh, for your mother on Mother's Day? In this case, we can change the question. If you want to say what gift are you going to buy to your father, to your uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, husband, wife, and whatever you want to say in this question. Number seven, who are you going to call for your next birthday party? Who are you going to call for your next birthday party? Number eight, what film are you going to watch at the movies? I'm sorry. <laughs> what film are you going to watch at the movies? Then we have number nine. What is the next TV series? Number 10. 
you are going to watch. Who are you going to meet the next weekend? Eleven, when is the next time you are going to the supermarket? When is the next time you are going to the supermarket? And the last one, what is the sport you are going to practice? Okay, we have 12 uh, questions. So we have the number one that is, when are you going to spend your next vacation? Where, in what place? Then what is the next thing you are going to say? In this uh, question, we can say whatever we want about the course, about our work, about a thing that we see in the TV. That is something that we can say everything that we want. Then we have, what is the next book you are going to read? Then what is the next course you are going to take? When are you going to meet your friends again? Number six, what gift are you going to buy for your mother on Mother's Day? In this case, I was saying that you can uh, change that question for whatever or uh, the what is the person that you are going to say? That is your decision. Number seven, who are you going to call for your next birthday party? Eighth, what film are you going to watch at the movies? Nine, what is the next TV series you are going to watch? Number 10, who are you going to meet the next weekend? 11, when is the next time you are going to the supermarket? And 12, what is the sport that you are going to practice? In this uh, case, we are going to uh, ask these questions in groups. So uh, it's almost time to uh, end the session. So these questions, we are going to ask them tomorrow. At the beginning of the session, we are going to uh, perform or ask these questions and you are going to ask for your um, in this case, partners in the group, like a practice. You can uh, create your sentence or your answers. Remember that we are using the going to. So in this case, when we are using this kind of questions, we are going to uh, answer like that with the uh, structure. For example, um, and the number seven, who are you going to call for your next uh, birthday party? In that case, you are going to answer saying, I am going to invite, and you are going to say, who is the people that you are going to invite to your uh, next birthday party? So, estas son las preguntas que vamos a responder mañana al iniciar la sesión. Son 12 preguntas. Y recuerden que para responderlas tienen que utilizar la estructura del going to. Al inicio, you can use the structure. Then if you want to add information to the answer, you can do it. But remember to use the structure. It's very important because it is a part of the practice. Así que si van a agregar más información a sus respuestas, porque ustedes pueden agregar toda la información que quieran porque es una práctica. Eh, pero tienen que utilizar al principio de la respuesta su estructura porque estamos viendo el going to. So, tomorrow we are going to eh, answer those questions in groups. So, eh, if you need the questions in the group, I can eh, send these questions to the group because you can eh, have your answers for tomorrow practice. So, now it's going to end the session. It's um, 
one day less. We have just three days to end this session. So uh, see you tomorrow and have a really good night. Tomorrow we have the practice. Uh, Roberto, tell me. Teacher, I have a question. Tell me, tell me. What happened, what happened with the platform? What is I happening? Have a problem. I have a ah. problem with the platform. You have problems with the platform. What kind of problem do we do we have? Eh, me dice ahí, teacher, de que no puedo este, escuchar el, el, el audio. Para, ajá, el audio para llenar la, las respuestas que me da allí. Okay, I will ask. Eh, voy a preguntar sobre ese problema del audio. En um, vamos a ver qué solución nos. Ajá, sí, el en, el, en el último examen. Sí, porque ahora nos mandaron ahí de que no, no habíamos completado, pero ese es el problema, el por qué no lo hemos completado. Bueno, Vaya, voy a... Mi clase, pero... Ok, voy a preguntar y en el grupo vamos a ver si podemos dar solución o si les pueden escribir de forma eh, personal a cada uno de ustedes a los que tienen el problema con el audio. Así que voy a preguntar y voy a esperar a que les den una respuesta con el último examen para que puedan completar el trabajo de la plataforma. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So, time to end this session. So, see you tomorrow and have a good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. 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 Good night.